Welcome to this edition of Frontiers, and welcome to Red Rock here in Lynn, Massachusetts. We've come here to set the stage for this edition of Frontiers. Now, just imagine something. As you look over my shoulder and envisage a quarter kilometer cube of ocean water, within that cube is a fusion fuel called deuterium, which could provide enough power that equals all of the power that could be generated by the known oil reserves in the world today. Utopian dream or reality? Well, enter the debate called cold fusion. That entered the pages of the newspapers of the world and the airwaves of the world when professors Pons and Fleischmann announced that they had uh, generated a reaction in a simple tabletop test. Well, at this point, I should introduce our guest for this show. He is Eugene Maloff. He was the former chief science writer for the Massachusetts Institute of Technology's news department. But now he's an author. His book, Fire from Ice, looks at the cold fusion debate. I'm going to leave it to you to decide whether or not it is a utopian dream or a possible reality. We're going to meet Eugene Maloff in his study in his home in New Hampshire. We start with the very first question. I ask him, and that is, just what is cold fusion? Gene Maloff. Gene, the good starting point is really a definition of cold fusion, so we know what we're talking about here. Let me roll that challenge out to you first. Well, cold fusion has to be uh, defined in comparison to hot fusion, uh, which is the idea of mimicking the stars. The stars make a nuclear energy out of very high temperatures in their core, uh, tens of millions of degrees in which uh, hydrogen atoms, in effect, the central parts of hydrogen atoms, the nuclei, are banged together and they fuse and then release energy and massive radiation. And we get sunlight and starlight. Cold fusion is the process which we believe to be occurring in very special conditions in electrochemical cells that Pons and Fleischmann and others have been working with over the last numbers of years. It's a nuclear energy source, I believe, that doesn't release the kinds of damaging radiations that a hot fusion releases. Tell me a bit about the potential. It's, a, it's an enormous frontier for people, isn't it? Because of its potential. The potential for fusion energy use on Earth is indeed enormous. If we believe that the deuterium in seawater, uh, which is only one out of every uh, 7,000 hydrogen atoms of H2O in water, is uh, deuterium. It's just uh, uh, the way nature constructed water on this planet and elsewhere in the universe. Uh, the, the potential energy from fusing these atoms together and releasing energy is such that one cubic kilometer of ocean contains more than enough energy to exceed all the oil reserves of the planet. And therein probably lies one of the key reasons for the intensity of the debate. Uh, that's correct. There basically is an infinity of energy for all practical purposes that we can get from fusion processes using uh, hydrogen, uh, or a special form of hydrogen called deuterium, which is easily obtainable, essentially free from seawater uh, in the oceans of the world. Now, you mentioned Pons and Fleischmann, it's Stanley Pons and Martin Fleischmann, two professors who, in 1989, announced that they had found the way to cold fusion, that there was indeed energy. What happened? Uh, there was such an explosion around that simple announcement. You studied it. There was an enormous uh, reaction on the part of the scientific community. The first, of course, was incredulity. And I myself uh, wondered what was going on because I didn't believe that it was possible to circumvent the process that had been engaged for the last uh, four decades, that is, the process of trying to mimic the stars by making uh, very high temperature gaseous plasmas in very complex and expensive machines. Uh, I thought that anyone who s suggested that they could do it in a simple tabletop experiment, which looked like an ordinary high school chemistry experiment, certainly must be wrong or diluted or some combination thereof. But the more I got into it and the more I saw, uh, despite the difficulties with uh, that, that uh, ensued with uh, attempts to reproduce the experiment and questions over what it really was, 
uh, I saw that there really was something there. At least that's my very strong opinion. And, and what happened in the world was that the scientific community reacted first with intense skepticism, but with polite uh, skepticism. They went about their task of attempting to reproduce it. Some got it, some didn't. Those that didn't, by and large, became very outraged at the whole business and started to attack it and became very severe opponents and are to this day. You found yourself really sort of right in the middle of it all because many skeptics say that there's nothing to it whatsoever. Particularly, I'm thinking of Nature magazine, the scientific journal out of, you, out of the United Kingdom. Why are you putting yourself in the middle of this? Well, I didn't put myself in the middle. I just happened to be in the middle. I was the chief science writer at the MIT news office in March of 1989. It's my alma mater, and I was proud to be there. I'm no longer there. But um, I saw the battle raging, the, contra the scientific controversy, and the... It, it appealed to me greatly as a, as a person who was interested in science, trained in science, in fact, and uh, a writer about science. Uh, it intrigued me that I might be able to synthesize the controversy into something uh, of the nature of a book that, that people could read and understand ultimately. And I didn't know where the controversy was going to go, quite frankly. I was a skeptic of cold fusion in the beginning, but I grew more and more strongly of the opinion that there really was something there. The book evolved over time. Now, I was right there at the nexus of the people who were attacking cold fusion and those who were trying to study it and find out what it was all about. What gives you a sense of hope that indeed there is something valid to the cold fusion theory? The thing that gives me hope is the enormous number of laboratories around the world that have gotten positive results. Uh, there are now over a hundred laboratories in the world that have various types of positive results for cold fusion, either nuclear products such as tritium or neutrons or charged particles or helium gas coming out. Um, and there are laboratories with very impressive power outputs per cubic centimeter of material in the cells. I can't imagine that all of these experiments, and they're all quite different experiments, and it's not all reproducing the same sort of thing. I can't imagine that they are all systematically wrong. It's not impossible that they're all wrong, but I just don't believe that. I believe the most likely explanation that fits this host of very bizarre results that do fly in the face of conventional scientific theory uh, is that there is a new phenomenon there. And there are some excellent theories, by the way, that begin to explain what this might be. And, they, and it is a new nuclear energy source. As you look at it, what's this saying to the scientific community in the United States? What this is saying uh, is uh, you better pay attention to this, even though many of you are not paying attention to it. You think that it has been written off by a joke because some very prestigious institutions, including MIT, including Caltech, and a number of other places, Princeton, have done experiments early, early on, uh, which they thought were negative, and have then dismissed the whole thing outright and have, in fact, be begun to attack it, uh, uh, attacked it from the beginning almost. Uh, it says, go back to the data. Look at the data. Look at the data as it exists now, not as it existed in March of 1989 when it was very preliminary. Take a look at what's happening in the field of cold fusion research today. Look at, there's, there are journals that are publishing regular articles now about cold fusion. The Journal of the American Nuclear Society, uh, the uh, journal Fusion Technology is publishing regularly on cold fusion. Give it a second chance, because whether you like it or not, you're going to have to deal with it.